is ripple factor so i told you what is ripple factor and significance of ripple factor in the previous class that is presence of ac signal in the dc the amount of ac signal present in the dc component is termed as a ripple factor so to calculate the ripple factor uh, which is represented as gamma is equal to iac by idc so we now have the expression iac square is equal to irms square minus idc square so from this i can write iac is equal to square root of irms square minus idc so gamma is so gamma can be taken as by the definition of gamma iac divided by idc so we know the value of iac which is irms square minus idc square under whole root we know the equations or the expression for irms which is im by root 2 and idc is equal to 2 im by pi if i take square on both side it becomes irms square is equal to im square divided by 2 and idc square is equal to 4 im square divided by pi now let me put this ex put these values in the expression of gamma i do get it as square root of irms that is i m square by 2 minus 4 i m square by pi divided by idc so what is the value of idc it is 2 i m divided by pi so here i m and i m common is there so i'll i'll take the common out i can write it as i m square into 1 by 2 minus 4 by pi wait i left the square here so take down so idc is idc square is equal to 4 im square divided by pi square so it is 4 by pi square pi square divided by 2 im divided by pi so im square under root what happens to that which is equal to im square under root as im divided by so i'll take this im out im into square root of 1 by 2 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 so 1 by 2 minus 4 by pi square divided by 2 by pi this and this get cancelled both the values get cancelled so what happens to this expression so this is 0 0.5 minus 4 divided by pi square is 0 0.405 divided by 2 divided by pi is 0 0.6366. So, if I solve this, I will be getting the value as, so this is under root. So, if I solve this, I will be getting the equation or the value as 0 0.483, which is percentage regulation is 48.3%. This. What is the significance of this? It means that you have 48.3% of AC component in the 100% of DC component. In the 100% of DC component, you have 48.3% of AC component. So, this is the significance of ripple factor. So, if I see it correctly, in the previous case, that is in half wave rectifier, the ripple factor was 1.21 percentage ripple factor was 121 percent it was 121 percent now it's been reduced to half that is 48.3 percent it's been reduced right so this is the significance of ripple factor so next topic is rectifier efficiency the efficiency of the rectifier is defined as dc power delivered to the load divided by ac input power that is nothing but pdc divided by pac so pdc is idc square into rl and pac is equal to irms square into rf plus rs plus rl so rf is resistance of diode in forward bias condition rs is the secondary binding resistance rl is the load resistance so i told you while explaining the equation of im the same thing 
so in this you have the diodes diodes have forward resistance that is rf and rl is the load resistance and this is a secondary winding it has some internal resistance that you write it as rs so this is rf rs and rl now coming back now i have to calculate the efficiency to calculate the efficiency i have the formula idc square so what is idc value i'll write it here idc is equal to 2 im divided by pi so idc square is equal to 4 im square divided by pi square 4 im square divided by pi square right so the next step is <coughs> i rms square i oh, sorry i rms i'll take i rms is equal to im by root 2 so i rms so i rms is equal to i m by root 2 i rms square is equal to i m square by 2 i m square by 2 now i have to substitute in the efficiency equation so if i am substituting that in the efficiency equation efficiency becomes i d c so i d c square 4 i m square divided by pi square into r l divided by i r m s square i r m s square is i m square divided by 2 into r f plus r s plus r l now i m square i m square get cancelled and uh, this becomes so 4 4 into r l divided by pi square divided by rf plus rs plus rl divided by 2 so new denominator of denominator will be numerator it becomes 4 into 8 divided by pi square and uh, into rl divided by sorry 4 into 2 it is not 4 into 8 divided by rl plus rs plus rf so suppose suppose the value of rl suppose r value of rl plus rs is very much less than sorry rf plus rs is very much less than rl suppose the value of rf is rf plus rs is very much less than rl then i can write rf plus rs plus rl equal to rl directly i'll write it as rl so this term completely becomes rl rl and rl get cancelled you will get it as for to the 8 divided by pi square 8 divided by pi square so it is nothing but equal to that is efficiency is equal to 0 0.8105 or 81 percentage efficiency is 81.05 this is the percentage efficiency that is the output efficiency will be 81 percent so this is how you calculate the efficiency in full wave rectifier in a full wave rectifier if i want to know like what was the rect rectifier efficiency of half wave rectifier so it was 40 percent 40.6 40 percent so now it's been doubled here it's been doubled like you are getting more output we are getting more output here than that of half wave rectifier next is peak inverse voltage so as we know peak inverse voltage it is defined as the maximum voltage that appears across the diode when it is non-conducting so when you connect anode and cathode in reverse bias so when i connect this to negative and this to positive the diode acts as an open circuit so when it acts as an open circuit what is the amount of voltage that you can apply here is the peak inverse voltage so in this diode in this rectifier that is this is a full wave rectifier you have two diodes so it has two diodes therefore peak inverse voltage will be two times of vm 
it will be 2 times of Vm. So for a full wave rectifier, for a half wave rectifier, it is just Vm. For a full wave rectifier, it is 2 types of Vm. Next is advantage and disadvantage of full wave rectifier. So if I come to the advantage and disadvantage, the ripple factor is 48.2%. 48.2% in the sense it's been reduced. When I compare to a half wave rectifier, it was 121%. Here it is reduced to 48.2%. So it is considerably low. And efficiency is 81.2%. 2% that is efficiency sorry 0.5% it's been increased efficiency has been increased if I consider the half wave it was only 40% but here it is increased so efficiency is 81% next it requires only two diodes advantage it requires only two diode so these are the few advantages of full wave rectifier coming to half wave uh, disadvantages it, it it has high piv value so i said you it is two times of vi vm that is peak inverse voltages twice the vm whereas in the previous case it was just vm and the output of dc or the output dc voltage the output DC voltage is lower than the secondary voltage. It is less than the secondary voltage. So this is one of the main disadvantage. Next one is the center tap to transformer. Whatever the transformer you use here. So it is center tapped right. So this center tap to transformer is costly. It is costly. Next fourth point is locating the center point so if this is your transformer locating the center point in the transformer is very difficult so locating this point is very difficult this is also one of the disadvantage coming to the advantages it has 48 percent efficiency sorry it has 81 percent efficiency ripple factor is 48 and it requires only two diodes these are the advantages disadvantages PIV is more, the output DC voltage is less than the secondary voltage and the costly that is uh, the transformer what we use center tap transformers are costly and fourth one is locating the center point of the center tap to transform transformer is difficult. So these are the main advantages and disadvantages of your full wave rectifier. The next topic is full wave rectifier with capacitor filter. Now let us understand. So till now we have understood like how does a full wave rectifier work. Now let us understand how does a capacitor filter works when you connect that to the full wave rectifier. Again I am taking a full wave rectifier. This is a full wave rectifier circuit. You have capacitor filter C and RL. These two components contribute for the capacitor filter. So when you give the supply voltage like when you give the AC supply. So you will give AC supply to the transformer. So after the transformer also you will be getting AC supply. So that is a sinusoidal signal you will be getting. When you get the positive peak this point becomes positive. This point becomes negative so d1 will turn on and hence this will be a short circuit path so positive half cycle will flow through rl and the negative half cycle will flow through diode d2 and again it flows through rl and come back to point zero so this complete thing we have studied in the previous section now so coming to the working when you have a capacitor here when you have a capacitor here how does the charging and discharging takes place in the capacitor so i told you that when i give a positive peak or when i have a positive half so at this point say let this point be e so let this point be e at point e you will be having positive peak you will be having positive peak and if i have a positive peak here this peak will or this positive voltage will make the capacitor to charge will make the capacitor to charge it will make the capacitor to charge when it charges so i'll assume that this is a very fast signal or very fast cycle so it will start charging like this it will start charging it reaches the maximum point vm it reaches the maximum point vm once it reaches the maximum point 
the sinusoidal signal will now start discharging that is it will start reducing its voltage even the capacitor will now start discharging so the discharging of the capacitor will not be same as that of your signal it will be slower that is it will discharge little slowly like this so while the discharging so you will be getting the next peak so now the next half that is second half you will be having that is second peak so this second peak will be positive here so it will turn positive here and negative point will be here so this positive peak turns on diode d2 and again at point e you will be getting the another peak you will be getting the another peak now this peak will make or when when the capacitor is discharging you the capacitor will encounter this this peak so again it will encounter this peak once it encounters this peak again it will start charging it will reach the maximum point and again it will start discharging again the charging process takes place so this charging and discharging process continues so this will give us a dc signal as i increase the value of capacitance so here you have the capacitance value right you have the capacitance if i increase the value of capacitance if i increase the value of capacitance these variations can be eliminated that is so you you are getting a waveform like this right so these variations can be eliminated when i increase the value of capacitance if i increase the value of capacitance you will be getting almost a dc signal you will be getting almost a dc signal so this is how a capacitor filter works this is the working of capacitor filter in this the important parameters that we have to make note are so this point this complete thing is charging time which is termed as tc and at this point from this point to this point where the capacitor discharges that is termed as td discharging time so the dotted lines which i have mentioned in the pen is the output v0 and whatever the lines that i have shown in the sketch or the colored one is the output voltage when you have capacitor so this is v0 with capacitor filter this v0 with capacitor filter so finally you will be getting a straight dc value or a dc or constant dc value when you use the capacitor filter the relation between tc td and capital t so here you know that i am taking omega t if i take omega t it is 0 to pi pi to 2 pi and this is 3 pi so we know that 0 to 2 pi is one time period right so because it comprises one complete cycle uh, so i can write it as t by 2 is equal to tc plus td so this is how you define the period here t by 2 is equal to tc plus td and to find the ripple factor ripple factor is c to reduce the ripples that is why we are using filter here to find the ripple factor what is the expression ripple factor is equal to 1 over 4 into root 3 f into c into rl where c is the capacitor so this is the capacitor rl is this one and f is the frequency when you take 1 over t so this is the equation for ripple factor the ripple factor will also get reduced almost it will be reduced so it will get reduced when you make use of a capacitor filter this is all about full wave rectifier